Number 12, compare the processes that occur when methanol, which is CH3OH, hydrogen chloride, which is HCl, and sodium hydroxide, uh, which is NaOH, dissolve in water. We want to write equations and prepare sketches showing the form in which each of these co compounds is present in its respective solution. Uh, sure. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to uh, list out here is that we have CH3, CH3OH, okay, and then we have HCl, and then we have NaOH. Okay, so the first thing that we should do is we should identify what types of uh, compounds these are, right? So for HCl, maybe I'll draw that in red, right? HCl, this is one of your six strong acids. So we got a strong acid going on here, and NaOH, which I'll draw in blue, is one of your six strong bases. So just make sure that you can identify a strong acid from a strong base from all other compounds that they throw at you. Now, the thing here is that these are all going to be dissolving in water. And uh, before we even try to write the equations, let's just identify if CH3OH is a strong acid or a strong base. Eh, it's not one of my list of six strong acids, and it's not on the list for a strong base. So this is just methanol, and just know that methanol, the O-L, uh, comes from its functional group, which is classified as an alcohol. Now, alcohols in water, um, they're... They have an interaction, but it's not as strong as these strong acids and bases. So let's write out the equations uh, for these three, right? Now, if you're a strong acid or a strong base, generally the reaction between uh, the strong acid and the strong base in water is that dissolving is going to happen, right? So a strong acid is going to dissolve in uh, water, and so is the strong base. Now, this is because of the dipole-dipole interactions. When you have water, right, maybe I'll just put, you know, water up here. Always know that water, H2O, is a polar solvent. And for HCl and NaOH, if you have something that is polar, which is what HCl is, right? It's polar. And you got something that's polar here, especially if it's a strong acid and strong base, these are going to break down into its ions. So we can say that initially, as soon as you put the HCl in the water, this is going to be aqueous. Aqueous, AQ, just means that you are going to be dissolved in water. And now we just have to write out what that actually looks like. Well, this goes back all the way to the beginning of chemistry, where we took our charges and we crisscrossed them to show what the, the compound was. But we could just take this from the periodic table if you want. There's H+, plus, right, because hydrogen is in group 1, so that's a plus 1. And the Cl- minus is in group 17 or 7a, that's a negative one charge. And we just have to show that these are aqueous as well, meaning that they are going to be surrounded by the water. Now, let's just do the NaOH. Strong bases are always going to break down 100% because the water is polar. It's got po uh, positive charges and negative charges, partial positive, partial negative. So the negatives and the positives will want to be together. Now for NaOH, you have sodium, which has a plus one charge, it's in group one, and you have the polyatomic hydroxide, which is a minus one. These are your two ions that are going to be in solution, and it's just aqueous. Okay, now we come back to the alcohol, but the thing here is that alcohols are not strong acids or 
a strong base. So I'll put SA or SB. And methanol is generally going to just be a pure liquid when it's being dissolved in the water. But I can't say that these ions, the carbon, the hydrogen, the oxygen, they're, they're not going to break down into their charges because the relationship between methanol and water is not as strong as the electrolytes, um, uh, HCl and NaOH. So maybe I'll just add that here. If you are classified as, a, as, as an electrolyte, you will have charges in your uh, aqueous solutions. But alcohol is a non-electrolyte. That means that it is not going to break down. So we have to keep it together, but the only thing that's going to change is now since you are in the H2O, we're just going to say that this is now aqueous. But it's it's a non-electrolyte. You can't have any charges in uh, your products. But if you do have electrolytes, specifically strong electrolytes like HCl and NaOH, you will have those charges. Now, they did want us to draw sketches. So let's just do that, shall we? Now, I'm just drawing three different general ones. Beautiful. Oh, boy. And we'll say that we got water in all of these. So here's the water. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to add the ions. We'll do, I guess, HCl first, right? H is going to be very small compared to the Cl minus, which is larger. And maybe I'll say, oh boy, that's going to be a little bit too big for the uh, for the uh, the beaker that I put. But you'll get the hint that if they are now chilling, they're going to be away from each other. There's no more bond between them. It's not HCl anymore. It's distinctly H+, which has its own interactions with water, and Cl-, which has its own interactions with water. And the same thing goes for the NaOH in that you have Na and you have OH. I'm just going to group uh, the whole OH minus as, you know, one circle. But obviously there's two uh, elements in there. But the same exact idea here, that the Na is going to be one place and the OH minus is going to be somewhere else because they are not NaOH together anymore. They're two distinct ions that have their own interactions with the uh, water. But then when it comes to CH3OH, I would draw one big, one big blob because nothing broke up. So if nothing broke up, it's just CH3OH, which is in the water now. That's why it's called aqueous. Um, but as you can see here, there's no ions here. It's just the one big blob that's in the water. Keep in mind that the only, well, the, the, the highest intermolecular force between the methanol and the H2O, since the methanol has an OH minus, you have hydrogen bonding. So the methanol is able to interact with the water because water also has hydrogen bonding. So they're able to, you know, interact with each other but just not in a way in which any ions are produced. And that is the answer for this question. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this community. Thank you for all your kind comments in the comment section. I love talking to you guys, and I try to get back to to as, much, as many of you as I can. Uh, so thank you so much, and I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Keep studying hard, stay safe, and be well, okay? All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.